Defy Nation, and welcome to another episode of Define Your Health with Daniel Giordano, strength through knowledge. And I am so super stoked, guys. I know it feels like it has been forever since I've been back from my second world record ride. And you know what? You guys know I'm all about plants, and that's exactly where we're starting today, but probably not, uh, maybe in the way that you're thinking. My very special guest today is master stylist Lillian May Lee, who actually has had salons here in the DFW area for more than 20 years, and she is a master, not just a personality in hair health, but coloring as well. And Lily and I had met because, well, you guys know, I'm vegan, I'm plant-based, I'm always looking for different options, and uh, she was telling me about this great new line of products, this company that she is helping to launch, and I says, oh my God. We have to have you on. You have to come talk to my peeps and let them know about good, bad, ugly, and pretty of hair. How about that? Hey, how you doing today, Lillian? I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. So let's break it down and let's start. You guys remember last year, we did a great series on dental hygiene, and I really want to kind of go about this episode the same way. I want to kind of start with the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to products, right? I mean... Most of our listeners are going to be familiar with those products that are tested on animals, right? When it gets into the actual chemicals that are used, whether it be a shampoo, whether it be a conditioner, whether it be a leave-in or a mousse or a gel or what have you, there's some pretty harsh things that can be in there. So do you mind kind of starting there with whichever one you want to start with, shampoo or gel? It's up to you. Well, just in general, in most hair products, they have ingredients that actually can be linked to chronic disorders, such as the pro- the ingredients are parabens, ethanol means polyethylene glycol, harmful colors, and fragrances. Now, where would these be found? In any general product, or are these specific to a shampoo or a styling aid? They're in generally in products, but probably more specifically in the shampoos. In the shampoos, okay. Mm-hmm. And also in a lot of shampoos are sulfates that irritate the skin and scalp and cause hair color to actually slip out of the hair. And also another ingredient is phthalate that has a long-term exposure can be toxic. Now, is that to- toxic to a specific organ of the body? Is it cause rash, irritation of the skin? or Because I'm assuming that, you know, when you take a shower, most people don't take cold showers. So I'm assuming that when the pores start to open, that gives a perfect pathway for these dangerous things to get into the body. Yes, they can get into the intestinal tracts and, and all other areas of the body. So are there any particular diseases or chronic illnesses that are related specifically to that toxicity, uh, maybe like irritable bowel disease or, uh, you know, maybe even cognitive issues like impairments or Alzheimer's, that type of thing? Yes. Um, one, one product called minoxidil, uh, it can cause things like that, and it also causes tingling, burning, redness, irritation, headaches, Um, It can cause a hypersensitivity reaction, low blood pressure, and edema. That's a lot of stuff. So how did these chemicals originally get into shampoos? Was there a specific period of time, maybe 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s? I don't know that companies are like, hey, let's start using this instead of that. Well, taking, for instance, the minoxidil, it actually, people took it for blood pressure, and they discovered that there was hair regrowth from it. Okay. So a lot of manufacturers took that ingredient and put it in hair products and advertised it as to decrease thinning hair. Okay. But it can have the, all of those side effects and more. It's kind of like the prescription drugs. Whenever you see the commercials on TV, it helps this and it hurts this laundry list of things and they go on for 30 seconds just talking about the side effects and a lot of times they say death and I'm like oh well that's a good trade isn't it yes and they do say that with minoxidil oh wow really so is that at a certain dosage or is that if you use it over a certain period of time or how how does that all again because fluoride's kind of like that right I mean fluoride in small amounts isn't going to hurt you but it is a neurotoxin So if you're using it day after day after day after day, it builds up in the system. So is this the same situation? Yes. They put 5% in the men's products and 2% in the women's products. But 
if it is overused, like men that work out all the time and shampoo two or three times a day, mm -hmm. it can cause complications. Okay, so the more the more frequently you're used, the more that's actually getting into your system, and then these side effects happen. So what about styling products? Is it the same kind of category or? Yes, it is in different styling products depending on what the product is made up of and what it needs to do. Okay. But it's more specific to shampoos. Okay, so was there a time when there were natural uh, ingredients used and then all of a sudden there was this switch, these chemicals, or is, is it just kind of, I mean, when did that transition happen? At some point there had to be natural shampoos, which my follow-up question would be, what were the original shampoos? I mean, what did people run around just, I don't know, using codfish oil or, no, you wouldn't want to do that. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Well, as far back as I can remember, they've had all of these shampoos. Sometimes people will try to use natural ingredients to do different things for their hair. Okay. Like people will put mayonnaise on their hair, mm -hmm. hoping to create moisture. Are you an olive oil fan, putting the olive oil on the hair? I've tried that a few times. but Not really. I've tried it, and it hasn't really helped. That's expensive conditioner. No, <laughs> especially uh, extra virgin cold pressed. Yes. <laughs> okay, so then, I mean, you've been a stylist for quite a few years, obviously, and you've probably seen a lot of trends. Are you starting to see, and especially because we talk a lot about millennials on this show, because really they're the driving force. You know, you always got to give props to the hippies of the 60s, but the millennials really are pushing the natural industry, the non-GMO, the organic, the get the bad out, go back to nature type of thing. What kind of evolution have you really seen from the time you got into this industry till now? Well, I mean, for many years, we didn't even question what was in the products. and Who did, right? I mean... And I do know that I and a lot of other stylists were always trying to figure out ways for clients to use the products less. Like if people had long hair, we would tell them to just shampoo right at the scalp where it was oily and not don't run it through the rest of the hair huh. because it is drying and causes frizziness in hair. And we're always trying to create a healthy palette for the services that we do on the hair and for the clients to be able to style it and be an advertisement for us. Well, and, you know, and it, it comes as shame whenever you have to tell people not to use something, but there is not really a great alternative. And I know we're going to talk about an alternative, you know, in a, in a later segment here, but that's kind of sad, right? I mean, that's kind of people that are using this. Now, is there a correlation between when or how old somebody starts using this? I mean, if you have your five-year-old niece using it versus her 45-year-old aunt. Is there a difference in absorption? I'm, I'm, I'm curious if you have any stats on that. On the old products or on the new ones? Um, well, the, the old products or, or the products that are most commonly used today. Like, you know, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is you're struggling to get through college as a waitress. You know, you buy shampoos and conditioners like VO5 or Suave or because why? Well, you don't think about it. First and foremost, you're like, hey, it's cheap and, you know, I'm eating ramen seven days a week. So, you know, it's kind of a tip. That, that's what I'm kind of saying. Like those typical type of products um, or even maybe a Pantene or a Tresemme or some of the more upscale products that are out there. Yeah, we were trying to get people to use these salon products like um, that are sold only in salons or th and then when they went out into Ulta and Walmart and other places, we would encourage clients to use the better products that did have better ingredients in it and would add some things that would decrease a little bit of the drying and drying out the hair and the frizziness. So there is a correlation then between cost point and, and the ingredients that are used then, because sometimes that's not the case, but with, with hair products, it, it is. The, it really is you get what you pay for. It is to a certain extent. Um, I really was never that happy with any line that I used, and, and okay. a lot of my colleagues feel the same way, that the kind of the general complaint was that they don't deliver on everything that they promise. So 
what you're saying is there is a correlation. Yes. Um, if people use the, like, big bottles of really cheap shampoos that cost $2 versus a salon quality product, there are better ingredients in the salon quality products. But also in those products are everything that I've already mentioned. Okay. Okay. Well, awesome. Well, what I want to do is we need to go to a commercial break, but I want to make sure that we dig into some of the positives. Now, I I think we've we've spent a lot of time in doom and gloom here, um, but we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some good, happy stuff. How about that? Okay. All right. And remember to find Nation, this segment brought to you by the Highway for Health Foundation. Childhood obesity is an epidemic that is preventable. Visit them today at highwayforhealth.org. That's highwayforhealth.org. This is Danielle from the Define Your Health with Danielle Giordano radio show. Something that's truly near and dear to my heart is the epidemic of childhood obesity in the United States. This is a preventable disease. This is a preventable epidemic that is taking over the lives of the next generation of children in this country. This year, Define is embarking on the highwayforhealth.org project. What is it? It is a project to call attention to the epidemic of childhood obesity in the United States and how preventable it truly is. The project will give parents the tools and the resources that they need to make the right choices and truly equip themselves with the right knowledge so that they can help the next generations of Americans. Visit highwayforhealth.org. Again, that's highwayforhealth.org. Again, that's highwayforhealth.org. And we are back to Fine Nation with our very special guest, Master Stylist Lillian May Lee, who has been in the DFW area and, and had salons in the area for more than 20 years. She's a coloring master and she's all about the plant-based products, which is what we are going to get into in this second segment. But... I want to talk about the transition with any movement, with any, whether we're talking organic foods, we're talking non-GMO, we're talking non-processed, there's always some sort of a catalyst for that movement. So really, what was this catalyst? We have all these terrible products that are doing bad things to our body to, hey, we need something different. What was that? Um, One of the main ingredients that stands out to me is that the industry started making shampoos that did not have sulfate in it. And the main problem with the sulfate was that it causes these expensive services that customers get on their hair, their hair colors was coming out and their hair was fading much quicker than when they were due to come in for another service. Okay. So so basically they were feeling ripped off. Hey, I just had this great, you know, whatever it was that they had done, typically color. And Oh my God, it's a week later and it's already coming out. Yes. So everyone was looking for non-sulfate shampoos. Okay. 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 So when did this transition really start to happen? Where you really started to see these more, and I will say natural based products start to really enter the market? Was it last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago? I mean, when, when did you really start to notice that there was an influx into the uh, retail market, really? I really started noticing it probably five to seven years ago. Okay. And it kind of correlates with all of the rest of the world, too, that everyone is looking for healthier foods and mm-hmm. non-GMOs, and it just kind of is in line with all of that. And so people started asking about more plant-based products and products that are not used on animals at all for testing and so we were searching so so this was uh, the younger generation pushing this because when you think color and i don't want to stereotype but when you talk color i always think of like more mature folks that get color but that doesn't necessarily need to be the case obviously people get highlights and, and all that kind of wonderful stuff was this a youth movement? Was this more uh, based on disposable income of, of maybe 
older, more mature folks getting these services? What what really was the, the push? It was really both. Okay. Re- a, a lot of young people get uh, lighter colors put in their hair and get balayage that is to, on the ends of the hair, and they want the color to stay on. Okay. Uh, women with gray hair, you know, want it to stay on and to stay shiny and to look healthy. So I really, in my clientele, was hearing it from both. Okay. Which it really is. It's like an investment, you know, essentially, when, when you're getting a good quality color uh, put on your hair. It really is like an investment. You do want mm-hmm. it to, to last. We, we got to talk about the company that you're launching. And we got to talk about it because you guys, you guys are going to be so excited. So I actually get to try some of the products. I'm very excited about this. Um, I already have started uh, to use them uh, Although I am a gymmer, so I am <laughs> washing my hair at least once a day, if not more. Um, so, and honestly, I'm such a fast Denisa. Don't you guys know that? Um, I, I've never really paid that much attention, you know, because my hair is typically up on a ponytail or, you know, I'm working out or, or something like that. So I am using them. And so I am going to be able to start giving you guys feedback. But tell me how this got started. I mean, who had this initial idea that, hey, we need to come up with something that's better than what's out there. We want to make it good for the environment, good for the human, good for everybody involved, and make sure it actually does what it says it's going to do. How did that happen? Was it was it was it over martinis? Or was it over cabernet? <laughs> Tell me. No. <laughs> there is a family called the Erdnet family from Venezuela, and they had a skincare line that was doing really, really well, and skin care and hair care is along the same line. Yeah, yeah. So they decided that we needed a, a hair care line that was similar to what they were doing. And so they actually moved from Venezuela to Miami, Florida, and we have an FDA-approved factory there that makes all of our products. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's, okay, so very cool. And when did you first get involved? Um, and, and, and really like really bringing this and, and, and trying to develop it in uh, Dallas, I'm assuming, if not other areas. Well, a hairdresser friend came in and had, had all of us try it. And um, we all were very excited about it and learned more and more about it. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And you know, one of the things that I really like, too, is you don't have to use a whole lot. I'm starting to notice that just as I'm starting to get into it. So, and I think it, it, it even mentions on the bottle that it's ultra concentrated. And so it, it lasts. It's not like your suave or your pant or, well, pantene or I, I hate to keep throwing out names, but you know that you have to use a whole glob of it, especially those of us who have long hair. We typically have to use more. And that's not necessarily the case, not as much, uh, with these products here. Yes, that that's true. You don't have to use very much at all, and it's really nice. I mean, a bottle of shampoo will last me five months, shampooing every third day. But another thing is that the hair gets so healthy and clean that you do end up shampooing less. And I also wanted to mention that for people that do work out, it's the exact opposite of other products because I want people to use it a lot because it's okay. so healthy for the hair and scalp. How about that? Okay. All right, the Pie Nation, we need to take a break, but we will be right back with Miss Lillian, and we're going to talk about some challenge, a Danielle challenge that you guys are going to get to help participate in, and we're going to answer a couple more questions. And remember, Defy Nation, this segment brought to you by the Thermography Center of Dallas. Your body is the most important thing you have, and you only get one. So schedule your thermogram today. Visit them at thermographycenter.com. That's T-H-E-R-M-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y center.com. Hi, I'm Bobby Schwartz, founder and CEO of Be Iconic Style, an online member site for women that's all about the empowerment of women. And I am the author of Style Essentials, Building Your Ultimate Wardrobe. I've been an independent personal stylist for over 13 years. I've worked with some of the world's top fashion houses, Ralph Lauren, Neiman Marcus, and 4510 being three of them. In this segment, we're going to talk about how a woman's self-esteem and confidence are closely associated with her personal appearance. Studies show, and it has been my experience, that a woman's self-esteem and self-confidence is truly 
tied to how she feels about her personal appearance. It literally impacts every single aspect of our lives. Confidence to go after things, our courage to go after things, relationships, how we operate within those relationships, what we attract to ourselves. And so in these coming segments, we are going to discuss all of the elements that you can do to up your game with your personal appearance. Be happy about it. This isn't about trying to be the next supermodel. This is just about being your most glorious self. Our giveaway today is a free week's membership to Be Iconic Style, the membership site that's all about the empowerment of women. And we have a tip for you. The 10-second tip is using a beauty card, and if you go to the site, you'll find what we, we, can, we call it the beauty card, and it's all about sitting down and listing the things that you know are physically beautiful about yourself. I challenge you as you're crawling into bed tonight to start that list. Remember, what you focus on, you enhance. Use this beauty card. We'll see you next time. This is Bobby Schwartz, BeIconicStyle.com. We are back, and we are with our special guest, Lillian May Lee, who is a master stylist, been in the business for more than 20 years, a true coloring expert, and we are talking about hair and health and plant-based products and how they are more beneficial. But before we get to specifically plant-based, what little tips can you give our listeners that maybe they can start incorporating for healthier hair? I can think of several. Um, one that a lot of people don't know is that when they are blow drying their hair, to blow dry from the scalp down the hair shaft so that it lays the fibers on the hair down and closes them up. And it overall helps for healthier hair and smoother hair and less frizzy. So in other words, you get the hair at the top and then you pull downward and then you keep the dryer on top of where your comb is that you're pulling yeah, down. Yeah, the dryer is facing down the hair shaft. Okay, okay. So they need a brush under there for fullness. Okay. But that is something people do it in all different directions and it just makes those fibers open up and helps to dry out hair. So let me ask you real quick, real, real, real quick. What do you think of letting hair air dry? It's good, it's bad, it's good sometimes, it's good all the times. The more someone can let their hair air dry, the better. All right. Hey, I'm doing something right. Okay, yeah. all right, moving on. Next tip. To use what is called a wet brush or a wide tooth comb, especially on wet hair. When hair's wet, it's extremely fragile. Okay. And you can cause a lot of breakage. Okay. So those are the only two things that I would use on wet hair. Any other quick tip that you can leave? And then one thing, because we're all so busy, no one really is deep conditioning like they should. So everyone has to decide how much. But what I do is I try to have a goal of deep conditioning once a week. So I usually end up doing it about once every 10 days. Now, you know what we should do? I just had a thought come to you. You know how dangerous this is that I have a thought while we're actually <laughs> on air? But... You know, we should take a picture of my hair, and I should take a picture of my hair every week as I'm using them. That would be a great idea. Then you guys would actually be able to see. Are you cool with that? Yes. Let's talk about the actual products themselves, um, because I, I just, I like the fact that they're concentrated. I like the actual packaging themselves, too. <clears throat> the shampoo bottle is so cool, guys. It actually unscrews just a little bit, and then it squeezes, so you don't have to sit there and wrestle to either flip something open or to try and get the cap all the way off. And I actually, I, I love that. I really, really do. And the conditioner is, it's more like in a, a like a round cylinder kind of a, it's not like your traditional conditioner. It's much thicker. Um, it, it just, yeah, I mean, it, it just feels heavy. It's like super, super, super heavy whipped cream or something, right? Mm -hmm. What are your favorite products to recommend to people and why? The main products I like are the Revive Shampoo for Volume, and the conditioner is the replenish mask that you're talking about. And it can be, all of the products are very versatile. They can be used lots of different ways. So that, and then we have a mousse that I really like. Now, is there a particular reason why you like those particular products? Or is that just what kind of helps the majority of the masses? When I introduce the product, the first two are the products that I introduce because they're so awesome and People, most people are really impressed after the first use. 
trying out samples of the product. Yeah, no, I was. As a matter of fact, when I, I did try the samples and I came back, I'm like, oh my God, I got it right. And then you and I started having a conversation because it really was. Um, you, you felt a difference whenever you used it. Go ahead and give them your website real quick so that they can follow up. And then also a phone number if they want to get a hold of you at the salon. My website is Lillian Maley, L I L L I A N M A L E Y dot my monate m y m o n a t dot com. We are going to do a little experiment. I am actually going to put my trust and my hair in Lillian's very capable hands. Besides actually using the monate products. She is going to give me a new style and flair. And we're even going to add a little bit of, oh, dare we say it? Because she's the color master. Color. And we're going to do some Facebook living. We're going to do some videos. We're going to do some pictures. You guys are going to be able to um, actually reply in. Uh, you're not allowed to disturb her while the scissors are in her hand. I'm taking your phone away from you. Um, <laughs> and you guys are going to be actually able to see this. And then, of course, the before and after pictures. And I think that's going to be fun. What do you think? Yes, I can't wait. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Are you guys excited? <gasps> I know you are, right? They're like, Daniel, you're going to have your hair up in a ponytail the next day. And I'm like, no, I won't. Because you're going to show me how to style it, right? Yes. Yes, that's it. Okay, so one question that I have to ask you. We've been talking about plant-based and natural and not having all this bad stuff. What does it have inside? I mean, what do they make this out of? Monate is made up of active botanicals that are quality grown with no pesticides. Oh, we like no pesticides. That's good. The products are pure, non-toxic, safe, and cruelty-free. Some of the main ingredients are procatiline, which is healthy level of antioxidants, and crotazorb, which is, has the UV absorbers, and the capixol, which is made of red clover, and it is the one that stops the hair from thinning, uh, suppresses the DHT, and cleans out the follicle, and makes hair grow like crazy more than any other product that I've ever seen. Well, it's good we're in the month of March then. Clovers are abundant everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and infused in the all of the products are the Capixol, and there is a rejuvenic oil that is infused in all of the products. And the main oil in the rejuvenic oil is Abyssinian, and then 10 other oils that are grown all over the country as far as, like, Sweden and South Africa and Brazil. All the seedlings are all sent to Miami, and they have all of the vitamins that the skin and body needs. And all of that works together to make the hair healthier. All right, guys, remember to stay tuned for our $500 prize pack that we are going to put up with a trivia question from today's show. Check our social media outlets. You never know which one that we're going to pop it up on. Until next time, guys, remember, motivated, dedicated, and highly recommended. Bye-bye.